Hey YouTube, it's ACU and welcome to the 228th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Alright, and to start off, let's talk about jailbreaking because I'm in the same boat as a lot of my viewers and a lot of individuals right now. I currently use an iPhone 6 Plus that remains unjailbroken. Now, I personally updated to be able to use my Apple Watch, but I know a lot of individuals either mistakenly updated or purchased their device running iOS 8.1.3 or higher, so 8.2 or now iOS 8.3, the current latest public firmware. So what about jailbreaking? Where is it? Why haven't we seen a new utility yet? Isn't it the longest that we've waited for a new jailbreak? Actually, the answer to that question is no. For those of you who are veteran jailbreakers, and by that I mean who have been a part of the jailbreak community since at least iOS 6 or earlier, you will recall iOS 6. From the time it was released in September until February, it went unjailbroken until the new team on the scene, at the time it was the Evaders, released the first iteration of Evasion to jailbreak iOS 6.1 untethered. From there, Apple issued 6.1.1 and 6.1.2, leaving Evasion unpatched until iOS 6.1.3, and then that was it for iOS 6. We didn't receive another new jailbreak utility, and now that we look at it with iOS 8, we've already had two jailbreaks, or at least two major ones, two significant untethered utilities, first being Pangu and then Taiji, with a number of updates for both of them, and of course, PP to support Mac OS X. But like the time from September, until February when we didn't have an iOS 6 jailbreak, we're kind of in the same situation now because Apple patched the latest Taiji jailbreak utility with 8.1.3 back in January and from January until May, it's also about five months. So this is going on one of the longest streaks that we've remained on jailbroken. So what's going to happen? Well, as I've stated before in a number of previous videos, both Taiji and Pangu have confirmed individually that they are working on a new jailbreak. First, Taiji stated so with iOS 8.2. They said they were going to jailbreak the firmware and they said they're working on new jailbreak utilities. However, due to extenuating circumstances, they had to push that back and it looks like they're doing the same thing yet again for iOS 8.3. They're pushing it back. And we really have to cut Taiji some slack, not just for the normal reasons, being that jailbreaks are extremely hard and tedious to actually create, but because Taiji utilizes a single developer by the name of XN. So yes, Taiji only has one developer. And when we look at Pangu, they just recently confirmed that they are beginning to test their new vulnerabilities that they've saved up until this point on iOS 8.3. However, the ideal time for either team to have issued a new jailbreak utility for 8.3 would have been quickly following its release. And as each day passes, it looks more and more likely that they're going to wait until iOS 8.4, which is kind of a good thing. And let me go ahead and explain why really quick. So iOS 8.4 is going to be the last major iOS 8 update prior to iOS 9. And essentially both groups are hoping that iOS 8.4 will be like last year's 7.1.0. X updates. So rewinding a little bit until last June, about 11 months ago, when Pangu rushed onto the jailbreak scene to release their utility to fully support iOS 7.1.1, Apple issued 7.1.2, and they didn't close the Pangu jailbreak, and it went fully usable on the latest public firmware until Apple issued iOS 8 in September. So that's what they're hoping iOS 8.4 is, the equivalent of iOS 7.1.x, and that the next jailbreak will go unpatched until Apple issues iOS 9 later this fall. Now you're probably wondering, well, won't Apple just release iOS 8? 8.5. Well, as I stated, they're not going to go beyond iOS 8.4. And the reason we know that is because of past rumors that accurately predicted every major iOS 8 update. And guess what? There are no such rumors for iOS 8.5. So we're going to hit iOS 8.4. We may hit iOS 8.4.x. And yes, Apple definitely could patch an iOS 8.4 jailbreak with something like 8.4.1 or even 8.4.2. However, it's a gamble either way because if Taiji or Pangu were to jailbreak 8.3 right now, we definitely know it would be patched with 8.4 prior to iOS 
9's release. But if they wait for iOS 8.4 and jailbreak the firmware, they're hoping that Apple will overlook it and that they won't patch it with a minor 8.4.x update again until iOS 9. But is it actually the smart thing to do? Well, only time will tell. But so far, it looks like that this strategic play will ensure the longevity of the next jailbreak. So now that we know the next untethered utility will likely be heavily contingent upon iOS 8.4, When's it going to be released? Well, that's a good question. See, iOS 9 is going to make its grand appearance at Apple's annual WWDC or Worldwide Developers Conference in June, which takes place June 8th to the 12th. And on the 8th, Apple will hold their typical keynote presentation at which they'll unveil not only iOS 9, but also undoubtedly OS 10.11. And at the presentation, it's expected that Apple will at the very least announce a revamped iteration of their Beats Music streaming service Service. And I say there because as I'm sure the majority of you are aware, Apple acquired Beats. And since then, they haven't really done too much with their acquisition. And at this point beyond rumors, no one knows for sure whether the service will actually come into fruition. And if it does, whether we'll see it in iOS 8 with the next update being 8.4. But one thing is for certain, once the dust settles around WWDC, we will likely see the release of 8.4, and hopefully the subsequent release of a new jailbreak utility. So of course, just be sure to stay tuned. I'm going to keep you guys completely updated along the way as new developments surrounding the next jailbreak occur. But that's not the only thing we're going to see at WWDC. And I'm especially excited for the event, not particularly for what you might imagine being iOS 9, but rather the next generation Apple TV. So the set top box hasn't been refreshed since the Apple TV 3 or the third generation Apple TV was released in 2012, so it's been a while, and it's rumored that we'll actually see a completely redesigned, touch-based Apple TV remote, which I think personally could be incredibly cool. Now, we're likely not going to see an entire Apple TV set, but rather just the box, so the refreshed or revised version of the third-gen Apple TV, which makes perfect sense, because once Apple fully opens up HomeKit to developers, the Apple TV is going to be the hub of it all, and it's going to be how you're actually able to interact with smart home devices when you're away from your home. They will all interface with the Apple TV and that will be the hub. At least that's what Apple's hoping and it makes sense that they're going to refresh the device not only for that reason but also for the fact that recently they dropped the price of the device to $69. And speaking of refreshes that make sense, the 15-inch Retina Display MacBook Pro could receive one itself, as customers are supposedly starting to notice supply constraints as the event in June draws closer. Now, the 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro is also an interesting one because it hasn't received a design refresh since 2012 as well. So could we receive a completely new 15-inch MacBook Pro that's based on the design of the new 12-inch MacBook, meaning it could be thinner, utilize a force touch trackpad, a completely new keyboard with the butterfly key mechanism, as well as the tiered battery design to save space? Well, it's certainly possible, and I for one would definitely be in favor of the machine, because although I do love the design of the 12-inch Retina MacBook, I can't make it work personally. I did a full and in-depth review on the device, and if you happen to miss it, I definitely recommend watching through it if you're at all considering purchasing it. But beyond everything that's going to be announced at WWDC, whether it includes iOS 9, OS 10.11, a new Apple TV, and a refreshed version of the 15-inch MacBook Pro, what else do we have to look forward to? Well, the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus. According to KGI security analyst Ming-Chi Ku, the device will receive some typical refreshes, but one that actually stood out to me was related to the camera that seemed to almost be reaffirmed by another rumor from a separate source, that the camera on the 6S and the 6S Plus will receive a megapixel bump from 8 to 12, which is something that we haven't received in quite some time since the iPhone iPhone 4S, which was the last one to feature a megapixel bump up to 8 from the 5 megapixels found on the iPhone 4's camera, and Apple's maintained that 8 megapixel sweet spot up until the current iPhone 6 and 6 Plus models. They've proved that megapixels aren't everything, and they've shown that improving things like aperture can vastly improve the overall image quality. 
but I for one would definitely appreciate the new megapixel bump up to 12. What about you? Let me know down below in the comment section. And that about wraps up this week's episode, guys. I do hope you liked it. Remember, I will keep you guys completely covered on the status of the next untethered jailbreak. And if you want to be updated more often, and if you want to win an Apple Watch, be sure to navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari, sign up, rate this video up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section containing your referral code, which is actually the piece that appears in the fourth tab at the bottom after the equal symbol inside of the link itself. And as for being updated, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me on one of your circles inside of Google+, follow me on Instagram at ICUID, and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.